And hi and welcome back to part two of Painting Oranges. I'm going to start with this photograph of the oranges on the bush in our garden. And what I've done, once again, I've done a little frame uh, from an old mount just to give you an idea of the, the shape you want to work in. And now I'm going to slowly put a pencil drawing together based on that photograph. I generally do a quite a loose sketch first, just positioning the oranges roughly where the, uh, the edge of the bush tree is and then I'll get into more detail once I'm happy. You don't have to be exactly photographic with the uh, your drawings but I think it's good to have the actual orange, those leaves and little flower buds on the left hand side. If you, if you can draw those inaccurately the rest kind of will fall into shape. And once that kind of loose sketch is drafted out uh, I've gone in a little bit tighter, a little bit more detailed. But there you are, you can see the, the main components drawn in and now I'm just going to sketch in a kind of artist impression of the, the leaves which are around the orange. This will all be built up in colour, light and shade, just to help show those out. As I said, you haven't got to get every leaf on. I think that's the important thing. Anyway, once you're happy with the drawing, um, you can start adding a little bit of wash of colour. I've got a kind of very kind of pale uh, yellow ochre. I think I've put the backgrounds in first, just the hint of the building behind. And now I'm getting the kind of basic orange colours in with a little mix of I think it's cadmium yellow and cadmium red. You'll often see me using a uh, washing the brush out, dabbing it on the tissue, and then just dabbing the uh, the highlights out. I've mixed up a kind of a thin wash of sap green. I'm just putting the main shapes in with the, the, the leaves around the orange. This will be perhaps one of three tones of green to help build that scene up. You haven't got to cover everything. In fact, leave a few gaps in the leaves just to kind of hint at background going on behind. using um, a round brush here, number 10 I think it was, just to kind of give those fine to wide brush strokes ideal for drawing leaves. So that's got the rough kind of scene laid out there now. Now I've mixed up a kind of slightly more olive green mix to paint behind the leaves. Just hinting in the background, it, I put it on a little bit stronger so the leaves will stand out from the background and then I'm going to dampen the brush and just soften that back in again. Now I'm happy with the background overall tone, I'm strengthening the orange. Add a little bit of, um, I think a little bit of burnt sienna in the mix there as well. Blending that wash big brush strokes with a little bit of damp brush dabbed on the tissue. And leaving that the highlight and I'm going to be wiping out the reflected light beneath the orange as well. Very similar to the the technique we'll be using on the, the still life I did in, in the number one video. The nice thing about a 
depending on oranges, you haven't got to be too smooth with your technique. There's obviously a little bit of texture in there as well. Now the, the greenery is dried, I'm just going to put a little bit of a bit more detail in the kind of flower area and mix up a strongly green colour to start adding some deeper tones in amongst the leaves. Try and keep referring back to your reference picture, seeing where the darks and the lights are, and this will help you just pull out the shapes of the leaves which are in the foreground. will also help yeah, make the orange pop out of the page too. I might even go in a bit darker a bit later but yeah be bold it does lighten up but use this stage to help define the leaves to make them stand out. You can see the pictures. I'm now going to mix up a few more slightly more intense greens. I've got a mixture of sap green and hooker's green. For those really kind of dark areas inside there. But just take your time, build it up slowly. These are, this is a nice style of brush to use for this kind of subject matter. Like I said, this is where having quite a detailed drawing comes in handy because you can, it's not, obviously not just colouring in, but it does help you kind of see where your your lights and shades are, particularly the out, outlines of your leaves. With a key couple of key ones drawn in, you know you can then just flick in some details in the background to hint at the the back of the tree. So here we are, just slowly building up the, the illusion of three-dimensional orange tree leaves with um, various tones of green. I started, as you saw, with a kind of light wash of sap green and I've added a little bit of hooker's green to that first mix, so we'll have mid-tone green and now I'm putting in some of the really dark stuff in. Keep your eye on just the shape of the leaves as well. That's going to work. You haven't got to get every leaf in, but if you get a few main leaves in, that will give you the illusion that you're looking for. So now we've got the kind of main shapes in and what I'm doing, I'm just putting a, a hint of some leaves in the background and through the gap there just to uh, slightly paler than the, the foreground leaves. As you can see we've got a little bit of scrap paper on the left hand side, it's always good to to try your colours out on a bit of scrap paper first before you go onto your painting to avoid it ending in tears. Now I've intensified that orangey colour and I'm putting in some of the shadows. If 
painting it on quite strongly and then uh, as it, now and again dampening that brush cleaning it and um, dabbing away some of the paint just to help give the uh, the highlights of the on the orange Slightly thinner mix, just adding that kind of orange texture. Just take your time, and while it's still damp, you see you can dab away the highlights, add a little bit more colour, dab it away again. Um, I think eventually I'll come back once that hair is dry and put in some even stronger shadows. What you've got here, you've got the, the sunlight highlight top sort of right on the orange it sort of curves around you've got a darker shade going there and then there's a reflected light underneath and then on top of that you've got the cast shadow from one of the leaves which you can see is super sharp so I've changed my mind on the lower one I'm gonna to have to uh, strengthen that up but now now you see that's nice and sharp that's a kind of strong shadow coming in from uh, a leaf above Now I'll get to the point where I'm just going to put some fine details in with some white gouache. Just hinting at some reflected light around the lower part of the orange. I'll probably add something into the into the leaves as well, just to kind of hint at some little I think you call them sky holes, just where the where you can see through the trees a little bit brighter in the background. Once I've got that in, I often, as you probably know, I'll add some just some little sketchy line details in with a, a watercolour crayon. This is a black crayon. And I'll just add some hints of distant leaf shapes, maybe the pebbles on the on the ground, some stonework, and then just sharpen one or two of the edges up. Finer brush now to add some um, fine details. Then the final touch, just a very fine brush with, with some white highlights, just to catch catch that sunlit edge of those leaves. Don't forget, it's a, it's a beautiful sunny day. There's a little little flex going in. I think nothing too regular. A few more edges. A bit too strong, dab it back with your finger. So there we go, we've got, actually got both pictures there at the same time. That was the still life I did earlier. And then the main picture beneath. Quite pleased with the way that's worked out. So the background is quite out of focus, sharper in the foreground. It's a good way to work it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Um, I enjoyed doing it. Please uh, stay tuned, 
Subscribe below for, uh, and I'll keep you in touch with upcoming videos. Thanks for now.